You join me today at the halfway stage of the Premier League season so far and at the very beginning of the January transfer window as well. At said halfway stage, City have finally not won another game. They drew one. So they've managed to maintain a 10-point lead at the top of the table. Is that the start of the downfall of Manchester City? No, I hear you cry. Agree, says I. 17 wins in 19 games for them. We're 10 points behind, four points clear of our next opponent's Arsenal. And you'll notice that we've built up a head of steam on the handful of those slightly below us. But we lost to Arsenal last time we played them. We always tend to lose to Arsenal every time we play them. So if they win against us here, then it will bring us right back into the mire with all of those fighting to try and get a top four spot. Spurs also have a game in hand as well. Will be keen to point out Manchester United 2 can get themselves up into the 30s if they win their game in hand. But they're probably a little bit too far behind for us to worry about at the moment. If we were to worry about them, then maybe City should worry about us. But I don't think that's going to happen, do you? So our goal difference is actually the second best in the league right now. Uh, goal scoring hasn't been amazing for us, but still the second best goal scorers in the division. So it's been pretty good. And defensively, we're one of the best as well. We're having a very good season. But with the players we have available to us, that's of no real surprise, is it? As we say, we're in the January transfer window. That starting lineup is absolutely good enough to challenge for a top four spot. There's going to be more growth happening as well. We've got 83 rated Klojic, 82 rated Chaibi, and a couple of others that either are or will soon be in the 80s with us too. Plans for January transfer to include... Selling Coquelin, already agreed. Selling Clearson, already agreed to raise the funds to sign actually a handful of youth players. Because, as you might notice, my budget is um, £30,000, which I can't even sign any youth players with at the moment. We have youth staff that have scouted some intriguing players, including the £2.1 million valued Herman Christensen from Norway. So we'll be looking to bring him in. There's three, I think, from this one. Indeed, there is from Hungary. 82 to 94 and 76 to 94 there. And then there's a high potential goalkeeper as well from uh, Australia. Actually, no, from New Zealand. 80 to 94 for Patrick Best. So there's some youth players to bring in. There's some youth players to bring up. And there's some low knees to bring back including Bruce Banks, who we're going to recall from loan there because Clareson will be losing. Banks now 71 rated. Has potential to be special, might we add, in goal. Speaking of potential to be special, hello Archie Gray. Now having potential to be special. He's going to fly up in rating for the rest of the save. That's for damn sure. Losing Coquelin means we need the space in the squad to be filled. That'll be filled by recalling Sam Greenwood. But at the moment, I can't afford his recall fee. So he's going to have to wait a few more days. Jamie Shackleton hasn't grown, which is a shame. I think he'll probably be leaving the club in the summer, which is unfortunate, but just the way of things in this save right now. That said, that's where we will crack on. Moving towards the game against the Arsenal, where hopefully we can keep ourselves with a bit of a gap down to third place. But... It's all to play for in the Premier League other than the title, which looks like it's already gone. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying the save. Of course, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more of this save or the save after it, which is still a little ways away for now. We're saying thank you in the background to Davidenki today. We're saying thank you to Reese Musgrove today. And we're also saying thank you to Nick Simiska as well for your continued support in the YouTube comment section and on stream. Now then, let's go and play Arsenal, shall we? That's Francis Coquelin on his way. Came in, certainly did a job in the squad. Was very, very influential last season. But this season, not quite enough. But that's what he was in to do. Coquelin departs and Clareson departs. New squad monthly report looks as follows with a couple of 66s that we might actually call up to send out on loan, actually. Might as well. In fact, everybody here I could promote and send out on loan. We have the space in the squad to do so. I don't know whether some of them might actually be worth just releasing and not spending the money on their wages because they don't look like they're going to grow that well. Tejera looks okay. 
but we'll leave him where he is for now. There's no point just bringing him up for the sake of bringing him up when he's not that highly rated. Now then, what I am looking forward to doing is seeing how good some of these other youngsters we've got in the youth squad might be being. Herman Christensen, the standout amongst everybody else. Still got uh, another month's scout reports to come back, but some of these Hungarians might be pretty decent as well. So we'll have a look through those guys, but I don't know if we'll be able to utilize any of that. Herman Christensen is 68 rated. Ooh, and technically looking pretty tasty too. If we can get those passing stats up, then we might have a real baller on our hands in the not too distant future. Right, one thing we wanted to do finally before we play the next game is recall Sam Greenwood from Lowe's. It's cost me 206 grand, which is a, a lot of money. But I need the squad depth, please, if you don't mind, Mr. Greenwood. You've grown very well out on loan, so please keep doing that for the rest of this season. We'll see what we can get out of him for the rest of this year. I expect the rest of the first team all to grow other than... A couple that have peaked, like Ben White and Peru. We should hopefully be quite a good team by the end. Of, I mean, we're already quite a good team, but even better a team by the end of the season. Arsenal, however, are a step on in terms of quality of individual. Not necessarily in league position. And even after, they might as well beat me 8-0. Still going to be above them in the league by the, the end of this particular fixer. Martinelli, Jesus and Saka. Havertz, Erdogan, Rice, Mendes, Jimenez, Pavar, Trippier, Mamadish, Vili. Yeah, it's a pretty good side, isn't it, really? I never... All right, sweet. Martinelli into the middle to Martin Erdegar. Arsenal trying to break through the middle. And doing exactly that is Erdegar again with options. Gabi Jesus, dangerous in the box. Still. Still. Oh, the touch from Martinelli to take it away from the defender is what has made that goal. They just are better than me. Arsenal Football Club. There's not really much I can do about them in any game we've played so far. We nearly got a point out of them last time. But at this stage, they're just... They're just too good. You see how the defender stepped in to try and get there, but Martson nowhere near it. And Gabby Martinelli makes him pay. Martson. Jesus intercepts. And now Saka's played through. Martson trying to get back. Failing to do so. Erdogan! Mele had to be sharp down to that. I was sneaking in at the near post the same way Martinelli's shot fired in to that bottom right-hand corner. Saka picks up the loose ball here. A little fancy flick to Havertz, who's on his left and winds up for it. Pavar finds Erdogan, who's on his right and winds up for it. And finds that far top corner. Why are Arsenal... Well, I guess I understand why Arsenal are so good. Because this team that they've built is just genuinely that good. We haven't really tested Mamadishvili yet, have we? I don't think we've even got near their box, let alone tested the goalkeeper. Trying to step in there to get the ball away. We've done well enough. And now he's well out of position. Nuno Mendes and Jack Clark will look to race around the outside of Jose Maria Jimenez, who cannot deal with the pace. Peru's available in the middle. Peru's there. Pavar positioned brilliantly enough to get in the way. No goal back. For Leeds United. And as it happens, now my fullback's out of position. And we might end up conceding going the other way. Martinelli has turned him superbly. And then with a change of pace, is in the box. And Arsenal still looking horrendously dangerous every time they come forward. Ben White trying to stop the shot coming in. Van Evelijk doing that. Now it's Martinelli it's fallen to. And still, last gasp defensive stuff for us here. We're going to be 2-0 down at half-time. And quite frankly, it could have been twice that. Bruno Mendes. Can't quite get to him. They've just got so much pace, Arsenal. Everywhere. Erdegaard. The back heel. Martinelli. I thought Melier was going to let that in for a moment. Goes up for the corner. They have a change of direction and a change of acceleration in this Arsenal side that I don't have. Even though we've got some pacey players, I don't seem to be able to deal with it. Martinelli, Kai Havertz, Bukayo Saka, Nuno Mendes. They all just... Take a turn, step, and disappear. Even Erdogan is turning out to be quite hard to track at times. Oh, and Archie Gray's touch lets him down. You can just you can just tell the difference in quality, can't you, between this side and ours. It's one thing having 83 and 84 rated players. It's another having 87 to 90 rated players. They're just a step further on. 
in terms of their ability to change the game. Lovely ball by Jack Clark to Jeannie Ruter, though. We'll look for Peru through this hole in our back line, which is the first hole we found in their back line. But Pavar is filling said hole not too long after we found it. Somerville will deliver, and Ruter might win this. Jimenez is up. Peru will nod that back. Edge of the box is Ethan Ampadu. That's Jack Clark. And his shot is deflected up for another Leeds United corner. And at least we're doing something offensively to give those away fans something to get behind here. Because outside of that, we've done bugger all else today. Mendes sharply into Havertz. Don't want to draw Ben White too far out of position. That's what I mean about the change of direction and change of pace. It's just undefendable at times. Erdegaard, the change of direction, is going to fall to Genie. Looking for Jack Clark. It's a lovely ball. His first touch is good. He's got the change of direction now, but the other defender is back on the overlap to cover. He's uncatchable. Nuno Mendes when he gets going. Kai Havertz. There's plenty of Arsenal bodies forward for this. Kai's going to go solo, though. Anywhere will do for me. Anywhere at all away from my goal. We are going to lose this. We had some phenomenal fixtures yesterday where the ball just kept flying in at either end of the pitch and you couldn't tell which side was going to win on any given day at any given moment. This one's pretty predetermined, isn't it, really? We know what the final result is going to be here, but will it be to nil or will it be to one? To nil. Christ the suck. Christ the life, Genie. What are you doing there, mate? Nice tackle by Somerville. Wojcik's off the bench here. Just look to get him around the corner. It will find him. He stepped away from the defence. Oh, and the shot was awkward, but dealt with by Mamadishvili. Strap trying to turn that back around the corner. That ball into it. Archie Gray was poor for me and Martson. Well, we can't say we haven't actually had the chances, can we really, to get something from the game? Admittedly, Arsenal have bossed us from start to close to finish. But with the closet chance there and the Genie Ruter one earlier, could have got a point from this, couldn't we? Quite, quite easily with the chances we had. They could have scored five or six, obviously. But clear cut opportunities for us that should have been taken. They might yet score more. Hey, Will. And that's the best of the bunch. All right, Bukayo, calm your tits. Wolves are the bogey side because they're the team that we should beat, but they always seem to perform against me. Arsenal are the side that have the higher rated players that actually play like the higher rated team. We beat Liverpool yesterday. Newcastle, to be fair, have been neither here nor there, but... Oh, cheers, then. Some of the other big sides have been more competitive we've been more competitive against them perhaps you would expect us to be but oh my god Arsenal are unplayable there's no other word for it they just quite simply are unplayable here's Joe Geller off the bench trying to do something but nothing can be done in fact all I've done is actually hurt the man floor wiped with my face by Arsenal there and that's the difference thankfully we're being consistent enough against the sides that we should beat that we're able to maintain our league position. Had we have won that game, you'd have said top four was almost guaranteed. Losing it in quite such a manner ensures that uh, there's still a lot to play for for the rest of the season and we're not getting bored with it yet. On the more straightforward note, at least you hope, anyway, Swindon Town. Please, for the love of all things holy, don't let us lose in the cup to Swindon Town. Now, I will quick sim it. Because, well, it's Swindon Town. Although, I did feel my heart flutter a little bit as I pressed the button. Sam Greenwood, first game back. Seven minutes played, bags of goal. Alex Scott on the score sheet as well. We're through to the next round of the FA Cup quite comfortably. 
Thank Christ for that. Who we get in the next round, we'll find out in due course. A lot of the Patreon players are having interest shown in them in this window, so there's probably going to be quite a bit to bring to you in terms of transfers on that front. With regards to transfers on our front, a lot of those youth players we called up and some of the ones that were still at the club that hadn't gone out anywhere yet are now going out on loan. Herman Christensen was that 68-rated high potential player, he's going to Besiktas for a little bit for the rest of this season and hopefully that will mean that there is a lot to come from him later in the save. Marcus Brown is going to go potentially to Belgrano de Cordoba out on a short term loan. Hull wanted to loan to buy him and uh, we were having none of that, thank you very much. There's so much going on right now, West Brom have agreed to loan uh, Hunter as well. Banks. Bids coming in for him. One from Feyenoord. Feyenoord. One from Fiorentina. One from Freiburg. It's been all the Fs. Maybe we will get one from Feyenoord as well next. We'll wait and see. But it seems like every time I advance, there's something else going on. Lots of interest in all the Patreon players. Nimrod has completed his training from a striker to a right winger. Makes him 63. That's certainly a significant jump from where he was. And there is absolutely more to come from him as well so he does have decent potential even though initially he was in the wrong position there's a lot going on Wolves want to buy Lucas Hunter which certainly we shall say no to he potentially might well be on his way to the black country but West Bromwich Albion not Wolverhampton Wanderers will be the destination and that might actually be him that's Marcus Brown going to Belgrano Cordoba sorry Club Atletico Belgrano Cordoba <gasps> And Lucas Hunter will go to West Bromwich Albion. There you go. It is happening. Sheffield United next for us, which is actually, weirdly, Leeds United versus Sheffield United is a battle for the top four. City have drawn a couple more. They were played 18-1-17. And since then, draw, draw, draw. The gap's still 12 points to Arsenal and to ourselves. But if we can win our next game against sixth place Sheffield United, then we could very well start to close the gap. If we'd have beaten Arsenal and then got a win in this one, we really could have started to close the gap. We just are not on the same wavelength as Arsenal Football Club at all, are we? Gerbic, Norrington Davies, Trusty, Kusinov, Trauner, Bogle, Shiravella, Harmer, Davies, Leverling and Satriano. How is that side challenging for Champions League? You tell me, because I can't tell you. Oh, Jaden Bogle gets away. And a dink. And where's that going? Well, Sheffield United mean business. They're not hanging about, not resting on their laurels. They want back in the top four, please, Leeds United Football Club. But I'm afraid, Sheffield United Football Club, we don't want to bloody let you. Closet gets the start. Fans in great song at the beginning of the game. Do I know their goal? Know your place, Sheffield United. We're the best side in Yorkshire. All right. Panevai into Ampadu. There's the ball. Out to Martson. Lozek's there. Somerville will go, and the defender got nowhere near me. Cut this back to Martson, who's got Ampadu on the edge of the box here. Who, am I mistaken in saying Ethan Ampadu has at some point played for Sheffield United? Jack Clark rattles the woodwork. That's a brilliant effort. Strout wins the header and will try and build again. Martson and Gray. Nicely into Peru. Had to bring Peru on for the injured little back heel. Oh, for the injured Genie Ruter. But it actually offers us the opportunity to try Peru and Hojek as a bit of a front two partnership because Hojek can play at Cam and he's doing so now for the rest of this game. We don't have the funds to replace Gini Ruter or to buy someone else to fill that void in the short term if he is out injured for a little while. So A, we hope he's fine. And B, we hope if he isn't fine, the players we've currently got at our disposal are able to fill the void. Oof. The ball nearly filled the void in the goal mouth of uh, Leeds United there. But thankfully, the keeper makes the stop. Clark could go again. Peru will look for him. Not found. And Shiravella will keep us honest at the moment at just the one goal to nil. Oh. 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 What are you doing, Sheffield United? 
You're not going to get Champions League if you keep doing that, are you? Joel Peru hasn't scored for a while. It's been at least two, if not three episodes, perhaps, since we've seen the Joel Peru celebration. But he was just handed that one. Like, go on in. Go and score it. Thank you, I will. Oh, they're going to do it again, are they? They seem so. No, you don't. Oh, no, I don't. Good save by Gerbic to tip that round the post. Somerville will deliver the corner. Can we score from the set piece anyway? No! Oh, I tell you what, Sheffield United just... I don't understand how this team are challenging in the top six. Volleymers! Oh, if that goes top bins, it's a wonderful goal. Chaibi. See the run by Gellar in the middle. I've also got one on the outside. Which one do I use? That one. No, this one. No, that one. No, this one. Ah, I've overplayed it. <laughs> one too many, I think. Archie Gray looks for a fourth, can't get it, but that will be game. We lost 3-0 and looks like we were barely even playing the same sport as our opponent. So good were they. And that was the same. It's just that we were the ones that were on the top of this fixture rather than the bottom of the previous one. And the next round of the FA Cup should be drawn by the time we get towards transfer deadline day. It might come on the 1st of February with regards to when the game is. At the minute, the next fixture is down as the Premier League game against Brighton there. But I have a feeling we should get a, a, uh, a game between now and then in the next round of the Cup. Ruter is absolutely fine to continue on. So we've got no problems whatsoever with that we do have another round of the uh, FA Cup drawn and you may well have been able to tell from the uh, from ooh, from the logo or from the badge that it's Carlisle we have in the next round of the FA Cup and if we as was the case with Swindon if we can't beat Carlisle we don't deserve to be in this competition do we but I'm not going to take any risks on this occasion Carlisle line up as you see them there. And I'm sorry, Carlisle, but I'm going to field a full strength 11 against you. That beat you by four goals to one. So, transfer deadline day. Ah, oh, Arsenal three, Cambridge United nil. I'm sad. 165 million? Bloody hell, Liverpool. 165 million pounds for Federico Valverde, who comes to Anfield for... One of the top five biggest deals I've ever seen in career mode. Unbelievable. That's, that's huge. Pape Sar's gone away from Tottenham as Nico Slotterbeck comes to Tottenham. They're the biggest deals of deadline day so far. Although Kasunu has now joined Roma. That's the third biggest deal all told. Newcastle have bid for Charlie Cresswell. Gonna say no to that. We're basically gonna turn down pretty much every deal that comes in. In fact, I'm sure we're gonna turn down every deal that comes in. Gabby Jesus might be leaving Arsenal. That would be good news for us. Christian Romero might also be leaving Tottenham. Tottenham's maybe bought Romero in. Or sorry, bought Schlotterbeck in to get rid of Romero. Arsenal want Joe Roden. No. And then Banks is not going to Bruce Mutin Gladbach. Thank you very much. Any other intriguing deals that might get done? Gift Orban joins Leicester from Lyon. He's a player that gets recommended a lot in career mode comment sections. One of those tall, physical, pacey players that YouTube comment sections absolutely adore. Ben Davies stays, thank you. He's a good squad player, can play in a number of different roles for me. Mikel Oyarthabal might be leaving Liverpool. Christian Romero has left Tottenham. 60.7 million pounds as one comes in, one goes out in the centre-back stakes. They've upgraded. I think you say Nico Schlotterbeck is an upgrade from Christian Romero. Certainly less hot-headed anyway, that's for damn sure. Kim Min Jae moves within Germany as well. 59.4 million to buy a Leverkusen is a very intriguing one. Brighton might be getting better with their midfield with Etzkel Palacios. Used to be at Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, moving now to uh, potentially Brighton. Alain van Evijk has a bid from Tottenham, but we'll be turning that down. Tottenham quite busy in this transfer window. Paris Brunner? I don't know. Maybe you do. 
potentially making the move. Any bigger deals to come through? Joe Willock moves to Villarreal for £37.8 million. Pounds. So as deadline day comes and goes... Wow. Okay, Liverpool have just significantly bolstered their capabilities in challenging for that top four spot. Fede Valverde will change the way that Liverpool play their football. We have Brighton next, and then we have Fede Valverde's Liverpool after that. Still waiting for those next uh, European games to be drawn. Manchester City would like Ethan Ampadu. Manchester City know where to go with that. Thank you very much. Youth Squad Monthly Report. Not really much to rant and rave about at the moment now. All of the young players that did look good have been uh, loaned out for the time being. I've only got five million quid in my budget anyway, so I still don't have enough money to do anything. We will certainly have to wait till next season to do something of our own transfer-wise, but there were a lot of transfers in the window and a lot of transfers with patreon players as well so i will update the spreadsheet momentarily and then give you guys a rundown balde's now left city so that's good for us he's gone to Bayern for 93 million in january oh, i can't believe that liverpool has spent 265 million 266 million 267 million in just those two deals Xavi Simmons joins Spurs. That's a great signing from Tottenham Hotspur. 87 rated Xavi Simmons. Very, very good indeed. That's top draw, actually, from Tottenham. That's really, really good business. Uh, no other major big name deals going through. Consoli Ramos to Leverkusen. Leroy Zane to Juventus. Uh, Christian Romero we saw. Kim Min Jae we saw. Meh, joining West Ham. Yusuf Makoka comes to Brighton. They do need the improvements. Nico Schlotterbeck, we saw. Sasha Bui to Newcastle is a good one for them. Finally, a Trippier replacement, as he left to go to Arsenal quite a while ago in this save. Van der Ven leaves Tottenham. So they're, they're still losing a number of players, Spurs. They signed Zemanski in the summer, but he hasn't really played that much for them. Alexis McAllister leaves Liverpool in the summer as well. Sorry, in the winter window to go to Villarreal. That's an intriguing one, because Alexis McAllister is particularly good. Kasuni, we saw... Uh, Evan Ferguson from Ghent to Porto. Wow. And, I mean, that's everything of note, really, there, isn't it? Well, how does the Premier League... How do you see the picture changing, then, from here? City are nine points clear of us. It's not insurmountable, but it is, of course, quite the gap. We're... Three points clear of Arsenal, four points clear of Spurs, and six points clear of Liverpool. Don't think Sheffield United or anyone else from below are going to challenge for top four. So it's kind of a four-way fight for the three remaining spots. And that fight is going to get quite intense, I feel, between now and the end of the season. We have, crucially, played Arsenal twice already, though, thank the Lord. I do not want to play them again. Soslaw will get them in the FA Cup in the next round. That's not been drawn yet. The European... Uh, competition hasn't been drawn yet either so we shall have to wait to find out who we have in each competition moving forward but for now we'll be very happy with where we are in the league happy with the where the squad is at present and hopefully that will be the case at the end of the season as well not long left to go but there might be an FA Cup title and a Europa Conference League title to come this season Got to the final of the FA Cup last year and bottled it. Let's not do that again, shall we? And so the final bit of any transfer window is showing you the Patreon players. And a busy window. A very busy window. If you see yourself on the odds chance here as we're scrolling through, take a keen eye. But I'll show you the spreadsheet in a moment. There were a number of moves in this January transfer window. The most moves we've seen all season and by a margin. So many, in fact. Some loan, some permanent, some unexpected as well, to be fair, and some more obvious signings with regards a career progression. But, again, by all means, pause if you see your guy and do join me on stream to see all of the stats in more detail. Moves in this window include Adam Ostin from Norwich to AC Milan, a cash no from Wellington Phoenix to Inter Milan, Alex Klobasa, our last free agent, has signed for someone now he's gone to Napoli, Andrew Devers went from Bolton to Chelsea. 
Bear Jackson swapped Newcastle for Newcastle, Australia for England. We saw Brad Breakwell go from Walsall to Atalanta. Cameron McLeod, Dundee to Aston Villa. Cameron Simmons, Liverpool to Marseille, which is certainly a step backwards. A loan move for Dara Kiernan from Juventus to Palermo. David Simpson moved from... David Simpson. David Simpson moved from Shenzhen to Manchester United. We saw Emmett Johnson go from Barcelona to Juventus. Arsenal for Real Madrid was Jack Wimpenny's progression. The Lille loan was already done there. Hertha Berlin to Salzburg was where Josh Barnes went, the goalkeeper. That's an intriguing one, but if I guess he's not playing at Hertha, then take the step back to then, in the future, take a step forward with your career again. Maybe that's the plan there for Josh. Shinji Nakata went from Wrexham to Atletico Madrid. That's Liam's player. Charlotte FC to Paris Saint-Germain was the deal for Matt Green. Then we saw Nathan Grasso swap Newcastle for Leipzig in Germany. Colchester to Athletic Club to Bilbao was Nick Allflat's change. Owen Howell swapped Cambridge United for the Bundesliga. Borussia Dortmund his destination. And Stuart Lynn left Aston Villa to go to Atletico Madrid. Lots of green there now this season. Still more red, but certainly significantly more moves in this third year than we saw comparatively with the second. So expect yet more moves as we progress into season four in this save. And then when we get even further into the Cambridge save, it's all hell's going to break loose effectively. But that's yet to come. There's still at least one more season of this lead save. And hopefully... Potentially a season five as well. So the journeys are going to continue considerably, we imagine. But that's all from me for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Hopefully you're enjoying this third season here at Leeds United. I apologise that the uh, break in content for having Jude caused the save to kind of drop off view-wise. But as long as those of you that are still watching are thoroughly enjoying, we shall continue to make the content. And hopefully continue to challenge for trophies, which is the plan. FA Cup and Europa Conference League is the aim this year, as well as a top four finish. Keep your fingers crossed. I'll see you tomorrow.